Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what I want to chat about is there is a brand new connector for Azure API management that we can go ahead and use inside of Azure Logic App Standard. So wanted to show you some tips and tricks and how you can be successful with that connector. So yeah, much like I just mentioned, a uh, new connector and there was a couple sort of things I wanted to share with you, uh, just some tips on how to be successful with this connector. Uh, including like APIM definitions for request response messages inside of APIM, and then also understanding where you need to put your subscription key in your Logic Apps environment so that the connector can successfully uh, retrieve that value and go ahead and call your API. So let's just get right to it. Let's jump into a demo. Okay, so I'm not going to recreate the API from scratch. I think there's plenty of resources out there and it's sort of not necessary for this video. I want to focus more on Logic Apps. But just to give you a summary of what I've got configured here, I do have an API uh, here called Work Management. Uh, this is a, an API you'll actually see it integrate if you're uh, going to be heading to that conference or watching the videos after the fact. And as part of this API, it's nothing too sort of crazy or anything by any stretch, but what you do want to make sure you have is definitions. Uh, these definitions will uh, are required by Logic Apps as a way to inspect the payloads. And so naturally, when you use a connector in Logic Apps, there's this element of dynamic schema that takes place so that you know what inputs you need to provide. And then also, so it knows what re response or what results it can expect so that you can use those values in downstream actions via the token picker. So what I did here is I've got a, a content type representation. I'm using JSON, so application JSON. I just take a very sample message. This is my request. Um, so I've got you know the, a very small snippet of JSON. And then what I need to do is create a new definition if I don't have one. And uh, I've just named this to be the uh, mean time to restoration request. So the same thing I need to do for a response. Um, I, I need to be able to provide application JSON, a sample response, and then make sure that I create that definition for it and save it. This is what's going to be needed for you to be able to see those values uh, in Logic Apps when you go ahead and add the connector to your workflow. Now, the other thing that you do need is you do need a subscription. And you know I went and created a product, an APIM product for this. Uh, you could choose if you want to create a new product or if you want to use these existing keys. It's really up to you. Uh, what you will need to do is click on show high keys. I'm not going to do that in the video, but uh, that will basically expose this key. Then you can go ahead and you can copy it and then you'll be able to use that uh, later on inside of Logic Apps. Okay, so that's kind of all we need to know from an APIM perspective. I guess, you know, if you want to go ahead and, and do a test and make sure a life is good. You know, obviously that's recommended, but uh, we can now go ahead and do so from this test. We've got the content type. It's already loaded my request for me and I should be able to go ahead and click send. And sure enough, I've got a working API. So life's good from API management perspective. All right, so now I'm in Logic App. I am in the new designer. Uh, so that is something important. Uh, the uh, this experience is, is found in the new designer. This new designer is actually going to be the GA designer like any minute, uh, actually, well, not any minute, but uh, any day. So uh, that is something just to be aware of. Uh, you'll find this working in, in VS Code as well, like VS Code already has the new designer in the latest extension. So regardless, by the time you get at this, you're probably looking at the new designer anyways. But if you can't find it, you know, that would be why. So let's go ahead and set an action. Let's go ahead and search. We can just do Azure API. And sure enough, we'll see it right here. It is in app, uh, call an Azure API management API. Okay, so there we go. So here we need to provide a uh, connection name. So I'm just gonna call this like APIM LA standard. And I've got my API here. And here is the API that I'm interested in. So let's go ahead and create that. When I do that, I can then see browse the 
operation ID, and then we've got our parameters, right? So these are the parameters that we need to be able to include. So that uh, is, is great. Now, in terms of how I wanna do that, I did have a compose here. Uh, the problem is that I want some structure behind this. So let's just go ahead and add parse JSON so that we can get a schema behind this so that we can use token picker. Uh, the content itself is going to be from my compose. And then I need to use a sample payload here. So let's just copy this, put it into parse JSON. We'll use a sample payload. Let's paste, done. And then we should be able to use token picker here. And here we've got ticket number and we've got site ID. So, okay, looks good, pretty harmless. Life should be good. However, we've got a bit of an issue now. Um, let's go ahead, let's run this. And I, oh, hold on. Okay, it's now saved. Let's go run this. And let's run. Okay, so this is run. And as expected, uh, we've got a failure. And so here it's call an Azure API management API unauthorized 401. And then if we look, you know, here, we can see that uh, invalid subscription key, please make sure to provide a valid key. Okay, so the question is like, where do I provide that key? Uh, I can't add it here on the connection directly. So what do I do? Okay, so here, let's go back. Now we need to go to the logic app itself then go into connections and then click on JSON view. Now, what we see here is that we've got a connection that was created right when we were using the connector. And here we can see that there's a subscription key placeholder for a value to be provided from our app settings. So we've got app setting, API management operation, subscription key. Okay, so if we go into our configuration, and then we look at our keys here. We can see it, it's at, it's at the top, which is nice, but it's just like this hard-coded value, right? Like this generic value. So this is not gonna work for us. So what we need to do is we need to update this key with the value from our APIM portal. So I'm gonna do that by clicking edit. I'm just gonna pause the recording here so that I don't have to blur out the key. So just uh, bear with me. Okay, so I've updated the, the, the value here, and do make sure you hit save. Uh, you want to make sure you save the settings. Uh, give this, you know, a minute or so, because uh, under the hood, we're going to uh, recycle the app itself. So uh, you do want to give this a little bit of time before you go ahead and call this again, as you might uh, have the app recycling uh, during all of this. Okay, let's head back to our workflow and let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, I see a successful execution. Let's just go double check. Let's check out our output. And yes, we do have data. Now, one thing, because we added the definition in APIM for the response, what I would expect is if we head over here, and let's just add, say, um, compose. I would expect now that we can see our typed output from our API, right? So here, call an Azure API Management API, so we can go ahead and add these values here. And so that's what that definition does. If you are missing your typed values coming back, then that is quite likely why. All right, so that concludes this video. Thanks for checking it out. And uh, we'll catch you again soon on the channel. Take care, thanks.